Um, so what, what we do every year is we obviously have a fairly limited amount of time. I like to talk about the most important performance parameters in video uh, to the human eye, which is what television really was designed around how the human eye sees. Um, it was not, it was a very scientific thing that was done. Um, so what you're looking at right now is a black level test pattern. It's called a pluge. It's coming from a generator. There are no, numerous different kinds of pluge patterns to set black level uh, on Blu-ray discs. Actually, most of them are better than this, but I'm, I'm going to be using another pattern from this, so I want to stay here for a minute. Um, the most, four most important parameters in video, starting number one, is contrast ratio. You probably already know that because it's also maybe the most controversial topic if you want to talk about uh, an individual topic in, in video performance just because there are so many different ways to measure it. But all you have to do is look on the box of any TV and it's usually plastered right there. A million to one, two million to one, uh, you know, in, infinite. Um, there was a manufacturer a couple of years ago that said, you know what, we're tired of the numbers game. Infinite. How's that for you? Okay. First thing you're looking at right now is a pooch pattern. Um, keep in mind on the Elite, on the Samsung, off angle is, uh, is going to wash it out a little bit. Um, let's get a remote on the Samsung. I want you to look at all these panels so that you can see that black level is set correctly. And I'm going to show you what incorrect is on this one right here. Okay. So let's just bump it up a little bit. Um, this surrounding the logarithmic grayscale should not be visible, okay? And then everything else in the pattern should be. Was it 46 or 47? 46. Okay. So just take a look at that um, for a couple of seconds, and then we're going to go and we're going to look at black. I'm going to feed it uh, video black or zero IRE, so that you can see the black level on all of them as well. And again, if you're looking at an LCD or an LED-based LCD, do it dead on center, with the exception of the WT50, which has great off-angle viewing. The other two do not. So you won't see it correctly. I know it's very crowded in here, so it may not be possible for everybody to see that. But let's. Um, We're feeding this with um, a quantum data QD780 signal generator. Oh, Ed, can you do me a favor and just change it to raster for me? And the contrast ratio numbers you'll see on the spreadsheet, the method that was used is, we're calling it on screen using an ANSI checkerboard pattern. So it was measured with the uh, Klein K10s up on the screen in the dark, right? So we'll put up that checkerboard pattern in a minute. What that does is generate some very high numbers for the most part, because you've got your your meter up against the glass. It's not getting anything from an adjacent box, whether it's white or black. Um, and your number is going to be fairly high. Um, I, I, we're all going to talk about this for a little right. bit, I think. Right. And, and, yeah. and, and David and I and Ed can jump in too. Um, I'm, I'm a proponent of a different method, which I think we're going to take um, somebody from the audience. We're going to try. We're going to do a little measurement and play just to, just to show you the difference. But for me, I like to get my numbers um, the ANSI way, which is to shoot off screen with a point and shoot meter from the seat, roughly from the seating distance. And the reason for that is um, that's how you see it. And, and that's how they do it in movie theaters where they're calculating contrast ratio either on film or with digital cinema as well. Your eyeball is never up against the screen like, like what we've done to achieve those high numbers. It's seated back in the, in the seating area looking at the image, right? So I think it's a little bit more uh, real world and valid uh, in that regard, although I do think the other method has some, some validity to it. We can talk about that. Um, so everybody got a handle on the black? Mm -hmm. Yeah? I have a question. Sure. <coughs> Is this thing going on with the television? You have Samsung in the center? You're all bang 
you're off angle number one, um, and you're seeing some LED, uh, we call it flashlight effect, um, shooting up from the, the it's, um, it's coming up top and bottom here, right? Yeah. Like side, 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 side. side. Oh, it is yeah. side. Yeah. Side. Yeah. Really? If you get up and look in the center, you'll see less of that. All right, hey, um, everybody good with this? Actually, wait a minute. This is not zero. This is going on? It is zero. What? Most according to your meter, it's zero. You mean according to the quantum data? It shouldn't have a... Uh, What's the zero window back? There you go. There you there go. go. Thank you. No, what was it at? It was, wind, it was a window instead of rest. Ah, there you go. That's from... Yeah, the, the line on top creating a fluge from the full loop there. Why, why is it here and off? Because it turns itself off with the full uh, black. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that's uh, we can turn that into the calibration process. <laughs> uh, we thought that was an LED trick. Yeah. What'd you just do? Put two percent in there or something? No, I just put it back the window. Oh, then if I go yeah, back I to red, even yeah. if you even if, if you, you put, put it at one percent, it'll come back on. Right. But even if you have a black background, I think even if you put a single pixel, in that, that's one percent. Yeah. No, we tested one percent. It definitely reproduces it. It just shuts off at zero. What's going on with the fan side? Yeah, that's interesting. What is that? We didn't see that. Yeah, yeah that is dither, dither, all right. Yeah. That's zero? That's zero. We actually put these two panels on the, all the way on the right, uh, one on top of the other on purpose. And the re main reason is it's the two best black levels in the room. Um, Panasonic VT50 on the top, the lead on the bottom. So take a gander at that. Uh, when the lights are on and you get your sheet, you can look at the actual numbers. They are different. Jeff used to do that on the LHB. I mean, the mic, I'm sorry. used to do that on the If everybody's good with yeah. that. Hey, yeah. Kevin, quick question. Yeah. Do you know the brightness setting for the two Samsungs? You mean the actual brightness setting? Yeah, yeah the, the actual, bottom one I just did is 47. Okay. Um, 46. Oh, well, if it's 46, 46, then I put it back incorrectly. Hold on a second. I take the. Uh, that one percent of the panel is not is that a concern? No, it's just that the panel on its own can't produce that in exactly. Yeah, 46 on the UN mic. Right. And the plasma's got to be 45 or less. No, no it's, it's 46. Oh, okay. That's actually a number that I'm, I most often get on the 2011 stuff, too. Why do you ask? Um, previously, on, on some samples I had seen, if you'd raise the brightness of both the default, which is usually like 45, 45 yeah. it would prevent it from dimming the backlight. Um, so I was actually kind of surprised that the ES8000 didn't do the same thing with the E8000. Um, yeah. At a lower brightness setting, it might. Let's try it. Um, Let's go to default and give it a shot. It's kind of just a just quirky turn, anomaly. Turn the uh, brightness down. Yeah. Go to 45. To 45 to default. Okay. Default's 50, I think, actually. No, it's not. Okay. Oh, oh, there, there it is. is. <laughs> ah, that's an interesting design. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it clips one percent at that. Yeah, Ed, can you bump, bump it up to one for me? I sure can. Give me a second. What is that? Is that contrast ratio? One percent. Okay, so that's one. Come back on? Yeah, it's on. Yeah, it's okay. Back. Can you get Zero. That yeah, let's do that. And can you run me back to the blue? Same thing it, it was doing last year where it looks like it's pumping. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, it pops up and yeah. it comes back and forth, right? I mean, it is one click. It's real close. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm actually no, good. No, the, only, the only reason I mention no, is no, that no. you, you know, the dimming well, I'm glad you did. You can, you know, you can tweak the output of your Blu-ray player in some cases, you know, to kind of compensate for it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's very cool. All right. Leave it at 45, we'll bump it back to 46. According to 
that's not the fluge pattern, of course, but I think it's Yeah, it's, it, this one is not the most accurate fluge pattern there is either. I prefer stuff off of uh, Spears and Munson's myself, so. All right, we'll go back to 46. Different methods of measuring contrast ratio that will, get, that will yield different numbers, okay? What you have on your spreadsheet, what we did is we used an ANSI checkerboard pattern. Um, actually, Ed, you want to bring that up real quick? Um, and we did what's called what we call on screen, and that is put the client up on each white box, take a white level measurement, average that to a number, divide you know, divide by eight, get an average, and do the same with the blacks, and then divide the two. And if you look on your spreadsheet now, you see some rather large numbers. But I think we'll do a little exercise on, on the way I like to do it when I'm when I'm analyzing a display device, uh, whether it's a projector or a flat panel. I like to do off-screen ANSI measurements with a point-and-shoot device like my CS200. The reason for it is that that's the way you see video. You don't see video by putting your eyeball up here or over here. Um, of course, the number is going to be significantly lower because you're shooting a white box from over here. Obviously, the adjacent things are going to affect that measurement, right? Um, but again, it's it's more to me more valid, more real world because that's the way you view your video. Um, and, I mean, we could go on for a very long time about contrast ratio. One of the other things that will affect it dramatically is actually the room itself. Right. Now, what color is the room? A white room is a disaster, uh, particularly for a projector. But even for a flat panel of this size, notice Robert has painted the ceiling black, the front wall black. In fact, he was. He was really upset thinking he was going to have somebody paint at the last second the rest of the back of the room black. It kind of, it kind of calmed him down on that a little bit. I, that's not, not totally necessary I think, for this. But anyway, let me get my device out and we'll do a little I want exercise. To add to, to why we use the Please. on screen. Yeah, go. The reason why we really use the on screen as far as the ANSI contrast measurement, which you guys are about to see, this is to be honest, it's easier to do. And another fact with the off screen, one, you have to have a meter that can focus from a distance. From a distance to the actual black um, or, um, square right here to get it right. And also that meter has to be able to read down that low. Um, none of our meters do it. The K10 can read that low of a black level even on this right here. However, it's field of view one too large to actually focus from your seating position to here. One other thing you have to keep in mind also with the off screen, and I agree with Kevin, it is more real world. However, you have to keep in mind, most people watch their display in different types of lighting environments. So the number that you see off screen is only going to be specific to that one point in time if you're in a, in a sunlit room. On that given day, in that given month, in that given year. Whereas in, in theater, it's more um, representative of exactly how your eyes see the actual image. So it's, it, it is one of those controversial It's environment that, dependent. Right? Exactly, so yes. If, it, you, if you have a dedicated controlled environment, then it's, then it's more, more valid. valid. Absolutely, yeah, exactly. it's more valid than doing it on screen. But if, if you don't, then what you really need to do is look at both of the numbers. Even if you have, um, look at both of the numbers, the one that has the um, highest number on ANSI on screen should have the highest number on screen. That's it. That's it. So relatively, they should be fairly similar. Yes. Well, similar. well, the, the number is going to be much smaller off screen. Right. But the, what he's saying is the one that wins the on screen big number is also going to win the off screen small. Correct. Number. Absolutely. Yeah. We're going to do a little mini version, very mini version, just real quick. Anybody have a calculator? Handy. Phone. 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 Mike, take a hold on that for me. Um, we're going to measure two white squares and two black squares. For starters, aim it at a like at this and, and focus. If you turn the focus out here, you'll get to a point where you can actually see the pixels in the screen real clearly. You got that? Good. Yeah, I do. Okay. It doesn't have to be completely yeah. perfect, but as long as you can see it. All right. Um, okay. I need a pen and a pen. So, so is this about um, We're gonna contrast ratio that's off screen? 
Yeah. And okay. it's sort of a, you know, a very truncated version of doing ANSI, just right. to get a number, because then you can compare to the numbers we got on screen with the same pattern. So, shoot for the middle of this white square here for me. Drop that meter. I know. <laughs> and then there's a button on the top you gotta push. This one. Yep. Just push it once. There you go. And then now I click now turn around, turn it around this way. So the big Y in the bottom is what I'm interested in. Point three two six three. No. No. Big Y. Big Y. Oh, FL. 35.33. Very good. So it's 35 foot <laughs> lemons. That's, that's what it should be. Um, now, do the center of this one if you would. It really should be straight on. It's okay. Do I do anything? Excuse me, I keep thinking. 37.80. Okay, great. So we need to do a, we need to add 35.33. Who's on the calculator? Oh, here we go. One more second. Wait for the phone to wake up. 35.33. Yep. Plus 37.80. And then divide by 240. 36.565. Okay, very good. Five six we go two decimals. Now yeah, guys, uh, one of you guys shoot to the middle of the black box for me real quick. Kevin, one thing I would say just for the audience. Go ahead. To measure black, regardless if it's on screen or off screen, your sensor has to be sensitive enough to actually measure it. That's true. Right. And this one is Probably not quite sensitive right, but enough. Right, this will give you an idea. That's exactly the right. point. It's not going to uh, be You have to do that again. Because right. when it measures black, it, does, it, it takes a really long time to get the number. So shoot it, and then let's. we have to listen for a beep. Clank, well, that's good. Going on the Clank A10 is excellent on screen. You got it? The yeah. field of view. Clank. Sorry, David. I, I wanted to hear the beep. Uh, 0.09. Zero nine. Okay, so zero nine. Excellent. Okay, let's do it on this one. We're doing basically the center of the screen, right? Mm -hmm. Zero point one zero. So point one zero. Zero point one zero. Uh, so let's add point zero nine and point one zero. Point zero nine plus point zero. Yep. Now divide the little number into the big number. Now to, to, to Dwayne's point, this is absolutely. I'm just trying to give you an idea. We're going to get a number roughly around five hundred to one, is what I guess. Zero point one four. Sorry, what did you want here? Uh, let's take this, the average of those two small numbers, so let's take the small number and I'll divide it into the large number. Okay, the numbers, sir. 384.9. 384.9. Calculator is now. No, no, we got it. We have it. We have it. Okay. 384. So it's basically 385, right? So, wow. Um, in yeah. fact, in a lab doing all of these, when I evaluated this originally, right before it got to the market, I think I remember I got 550. So just for fun, what's your name again? Joe. 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 <laughs> I want you to um, do me a favor. Just take the focus ring like this. Look through the viewfinder. Then you can pick any box and just focus it. You should be able to see every pixel through there pretty yeah. clearly. I want you to focus on this white square in the center right there. Right here? Yep. Try and hit near my finger there and just push the button once. Okay, now once it beeps, you look over here, we got 33.57 foot lengths. That's the peak light output of that box. Okay. 
All right, now aim down in the center of this box for me, if you will. Okay. And do, hit your button there, just once, and then you wait for the beep. Beep. 37.13. All right. And focus over on this black box in the center, if you will. Got it. Yep. He's actually shooting the uh, Samsung UN 60 ES 8000 edge lid. Point one zero. Thank you. And let's do this box here. This is just a truncated method of. Uh, obviously, I would measure every one of them in my testing. Um, point one one. Point one one. Just to give an idea, this is not uh, representative. Of we would also have all of these shut off, which means the number of the prop would be considerably higher. Um, okay, so let's do some math, Wayne. Thirty-five point three five is. Uh, Reference light, light J, and for black is going to be 0 0.105. So let's do the math and divide the big number and the little number. 336.67. Okay, that's actually a really good number. Um, compare it to the, to the Samsung 60ES8000 on screen number you have on your sheet, you'll see it's extremely small. Now. Um, to give you just some reference, in a movie theater, you get around 150 to one. <coughs> With the exit light on and, and the LED, you know, um, lighting along the, uh, the rows and stuff like that, you get about 150 to one in the movie theater. With film. I don't know, but digital cinema might be a little bit higher than that because you're getting higher uh, light outputs from these machines. But th those numbers are small compared to what you're used to reading, right? I mean, again, look in the box, one million to one. Too many, I see these numbers all the way time. I think a couple of years ago, Sony said, ah, we're not going to put a number on it. It's infinite. Oh, come on now. Um, so I just believe that this is a little bit more real world. And the other thing about contrast ratio, and you guys please jump in anytime you want to talk about any of this, the environment that the TV in affects it dramatically. It's a component to the video system. Um, when you design a, a, a projection home theater, the color of the walls become critical. Not just uh, a, a factor, but critical to the performance of what's going on in that room. Um, so if this room were all white, our number probably would have been a little lower than that. Because the walls are reflecting, reflecting the light all over the place, knocking your contrast. Um, but that's a real world number as to what, Mike, what you're seeing when you're sitting back on your couch watching your calibrated elite. You're roughly looking at about 500 to 1. And it's a spectacular number. It's two and a half, three times, three times and change what you're looking at when you go to a movie theater. So, I mean, it, yeah, whatever, you know, I'm being general. I, I think it's that's probably at the limit of about 1,000 to 1,200 to 1. Okay, now speaking of limits, let's talk about what the eye actually can see. Um, from what I've read over the years, 800 to 1 is a number that. Average. 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 1,200 to 1 max. would be absolute max in a black room when you're fully acclimated to that with an image on the screen. So I just like people to get a little perspective on these gigantic numbers that manufacturers are throwing out there. Um, spec sheets, obviously, people like bigger is better. Numbers that are bigger are usually better. That's what marketing people do. And that's fine. Um, so. You can look when, whenever you want at the other contrast numbers. Also, the other thing to remember, whatever got the really high number from the on-screen method is probably going to win the off-screen method also. So, um, Let's go back to a black field on that, uh, please, Ed. I want everybody to take a look at black. This is video black, zero IRE being fed out of a generator. So all of the panels, let me propose that door. Okay. Yeah, oh, you want to put white up for two minutes? Okay. 30 seconds. Yeah, um, a minute, 30 seconds, whatever. Get rid of some of that little protection. Uh, let me squeeze the measure for a second. Wow. In the meantime, somebody can do a dance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's just one of the uh, things with plasma. It, it has an issue. Well, an issue. It's, it's not really an issue. It's by design. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Yeah. 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 Y
Oh, well, well, that would depend upon how bright the environment is. Could be 1.8, it could be 2.0. That's uh, a decision you really have to make um, in the in the environment you're setting the panel for the projector. Up. And it's also based on the display capability also. Some displays just don't look right with a specific camera. There you go. Um, you know what? Let's, uh, Ed, can you put Watchman in the, in the, um, Oppo for me. Oh, yeah, we'll so switch. Switch. I'll switch over to it. Yeah, let's put a light on real quick. Right okay. back would be great. So we'll put some uh, very dark material from Watchman. It's kind of an odd film. It's very good transfer. Yeah. Kevin, I'll just, is a good. just to support what you said, the studios have basically <coughs> settled on 2.4 for Rec 709 for production work. It's actually the ITU. Well, okay, but I mean, but, it's a... Right, but it's but a done deal. But they're standard. They, st they were thinking 2.35, and they settled on 2.4. That's correct. That happened about, I want to say, two or three months ago. Yeah. It was finalized. Right. If you go to ITU's website, you can find... It's actually difficult. Uh, you will find a couple of papers in there. It took me about an hour and a half to find the one that I could see that actually said, this yeah. is it. So, so but it is done. So if you calibrate everything to a 35 foot land, yeah. then why is it that the flashes are all around the 20 level? Yeah. The maximum yeah. And then, by the way, it's because of how plasma works. That's what he's explaining. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, plasma has all the automatic yeah. brightness yeah. limiting circuits. All this, your CRTs your have this also. Okay. If if you get a, a full white screen. It will lower the luminance of the thing to keep the power below a certain level. Okay, so here you had, uh, there's not very many TV images that have half of the pixels on, like the ANSI pattern. And so the glass on its automatic right of limiting circuit has kicked in and lowered the luminance. But in the, in the elites, for example, you get 35 more times on the that's not a flash. It's an LED light. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Well, they don't have that. Stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. That's that's it. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, yeah. 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 So is that your image? No. That's no. I don't think so. That. That. No. The CRT. Is, right. That was before I was born. Don't pay attention to the yellows. Pay no attention. Get into that later. Exactly. Uh, yeah, we did. We did. Yeah. It's in the uh, ISF night. Okay. If you look at the black bars, that's one good indicator. Obviously, look at content. Yeah, look at um, detail in the dark areas in the picture when we get to something a little bit uh, with a little more detail. Really have to move around um, yeah, to look at the angle. Yeah, absolutely. You the, I mean, this yeah. one looks lousy over here absolutely. because I'm at the wrong angle. You're if I come over right. here, I bet you it's going to look a lot better. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Better. I'm sure it does. Yeah, yeah. but then again, if, if yeah, somebody in your, musical chairs. you know, <laughs> <laughs> which one of your family members is going to get the good seat? Ooh, there you, go. <laughs> you better design Me, the course. seating area. It better better be your wife. <laughs> 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 that would get a bigger part. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. uh, we just found an error on the actual uh, specs sheet for the sharp elite, the black level reading. It shows on the uh, sheet at 0 0.004. It should be 0 0.004. So three zeros and a four, not two zeros and a four. When we put the checkerboard pattern up, the LCD LED technology to black level does rise. Compared to a full screen black of 0 0.0004, we came up to 0 0.002, 0 0.003. It didn't do that that's it came up, but not not, that, not as different as it was this year. Really? Yeah. yeah. It held a lower level last year. But it didn't stay at point zero 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 four last year either. The, the story with this is, okay, last year for our ANSI checkerboard pattern, we used a 4x4 four four matrix. Wow. This year, we use a 5x5. Five five. So with a, a local dimming zoned LCD, with the 5x5, five five, you got more of a bleed between the whites and the zones. So you have more white boxes. Exactly. Uh -huh. Now, some people may say that invalidates the actual contrast ratio for ANSI. Yes and no. Remember, with regular content, you're going to get zone yeah. bleed. So <coughs> if you really want to do it, you can actually take the in-between the in between the 2 and the 4 and come up with 3 
and we can make a measurement out of that so that you can have both, or the four by four and the five by five. If you if you, if you guys really want us to do that, I mean that's fine. But I just wanted yeah. to say that's that's well, why. You could also make an difference. argument to go even above five by five for for yeah, very true. eight by eight. Right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if you start getting into eight by eight, you still might be within the actual zone template of this particular display. But again, you're right because not all displays have the same amount of zone. So exactly. regardless of the ANSI pattern, they're not going to always 100% line up with those zones so that you can get that astronomical right. contrast ratio. So the more the more squares, the better. Exactly. You have a playing field you've got on on how they're. You know, because you right. you will expose some of the zone right. issues. The, the data is still going to show you which one is higher than the right. other anyway. Right. So. right. Yeah. Are we all voted on this so we can move to the next category? Yeah. We're yeah. voting in both. Um, this is the black, right? Black, 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 black level and contrast, contrast ratio. Yeah. Could some, yeah, black and contrast ratio. Yeah. Okay.